The life and sad ending of Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood was born Clinton Eastwood Jr. on May 31, 1930, in St. Francis Memorial Hospital in San Francisco, California to Ruth and Clinton Eastwood. Eastwood was nicknamed Samson by the hospital nurses because he weighed 11 pounds 6 ounces 5.2 kilograms at birth. He has a younger sister, Jean Bernhardt. Eastwood attended Piedmont Middle School where he was held back due to poor academic scores, and records indicated he also had to attend summer school. From January 1945 until at least January 1946, he attended Piedmont High School but was asked to leave for writing an obscene suggestion to a school official on the athletic field scoreboard and for burning an effigy on the school lawn, on top of other school infractions. Cruel times Clint Eastwood was just silent. Despite the arranged conditions, are we too impatient? Just love, just dream, but never know how to love someone. Just get used to them, nothing more than words. What is more painful than the word ever? Ever holding hands, loved and hoped, gave each other stained memories, what more pain than the word used to hold hands, but could not hold to lose together? Eastwood has had numerous casual and serious relationships of varying length and intensity over his life, many of which overlapped. Shortly after he met his future wife Maggie Johnson on a blind date in spring 1953, Eastwood had a relationship that resulted in a daughter, Lori, who was adopted by Clyde and Helen Warren of Seattle. Eastwood continued having affairs while married to Johnson, including a 1959-1973 liaison with stuntwoman Roxanne Tunis that produced a daughter, Kimber. They had two children, Kyle and Allison. In 1975, Eastwood and married actress Sandra Locke began living together. Locke claimed that Eastwood sang she made me monogamous to her and confided had never been in love before. Every promise now does not hold anymore having to rely on others to rely on. In the future there will be all. Unfortunately, there is no way to force it. Nine years into their cohabitation, Eastwood officially divorced Maggie Johnson, but Locke remained married to husband Gordon Anderson for the rest of her life. In an unpublicized affair, Eastwood sired two legally fatherless children, Scott and Catherine with Jocelyn Reeves, a flight attendant. When Locke and Eastwood separated in 1989, Locke filed a palimony lawsuit. In the early to mid-1990s, Eastwood had a relationship with actress Frances Fisher that produced a daughter, Francesca. Eastwood was married for the second time in 1996 to news anchor Dina Ruiz, who gave birth to their daughter Morgan that same year. Ruiz and Eastwood's marriage lasted until 2013. He has been seen with other women since then. In May 1954, Eastwood made his first real audition for Six Bridges to Cross but was rejected by Joseph Pevney. After many unsuccessful auditions, he was eventually given a minor role by director Jack Arnold in Revenge of the Creature, a sequel to the recently released Creature from the Black Lagoon. In September 1954, Eastwood worked for three weeks on Arthur Lubin's Lady Godiva of Coventry, won a role in February 1955, playing Jonesy, a sailor in Francis in the Navy, and appeared uncredited in another Jack Arnold film, Tarantula, where he played a squadron pilot. Universal presented him with his first television role on July 2, 1955, on NBC's Allen in Movieland. In 1958, Eastwood was cast as Rowdy Yates for the CBS hour-long Western series Rawhide, the career breakthrough he had long sought. Filming began in Arizona in the summer of 1958. It took just three weeks for Rawhide to reach the top 20 in TV ratings and although it never won an Emmy, it was a major success for several years and peaked at number 6 in the ratings between October 1960 and April 1961. The Rawhide years 1959 to 1965 were some of the most grueling of Eastwood's career, often filming six days a week for an average of 12 hours a day, but some directors still criticized him for not working hard enough. 
by late 1963, Rawhide was beginning to decline in the ratings and lack freshness in the scripts, it was cancelled in the middle of the 1965-1966 season. Eastwood made his first attempt at directing when he filmed several trailers for the show but was unable to convince producers to let him direct an episode. In the show's first season Eastwood earned $750 an episode. At the time of Rawhide's cancellation, he received $119,000 an episode as severance pay. A Fistful of Dollars proved a landmark in the development of Spaghetti Westerns, the film's success made Eastwood a major star in Italy and he was rehired to star in for a few dollars more. The Dollars Trilogy was not released in the United States until 1967. All three were commercially successful, particularly The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly which eventually earned $8 million in rental earnings and turned Eastwood into a major film star being ranked for the first time on Quigley's Top 10 Money Making Stars poll in 1968 in fifth place. Before Hang M. High's release, Eastwood had already begun working on Coogan's Bluff, about an Arizona deputy sheriff tracking a wanted psychopathic criminal through New York City. He was reunited with Universal Studios for it after receiving an offer of $1 million, more than double his previous salary. Jennings Lang arranged for Eastwood to meet Don Siegel, a Universal contract director who later became Eastwood's close friend, forming a partnership that would last more than 10 years and produce five films. Eastwood then branched out to star in the only musical of his career, Paint Your Wagon. The film was not a critical or commercial success but was nominated for a Golden Globe Award for Best Motion Picture, Musical or Comedy. Eastwood again played a mysterious stranger, in Shaven, wearing a Serapi-like vest, and smoking a cigar. Although it received moderate reviews, the film is listed in the New York Times Guide to the Best 1000 Movies Ever Made. Eastwood's career reached a turning point in 1971. Dirty Harry has been described as being arguably Eastwood's most memorable character, and the film has been credited with inventing the loose canon cop genre. After having been second for the past two years, Eastwood was voted first in Quigley's Top 10 Money Making Stars poll in 1972 and again in 1973. Eastwood's first western as director was High Plains Drifter, in which he also starred. The film had a moral and supernatural theme, later emulated in Pale Rider. The plot follows a mysterious stranger who arrives in a brooding western town where the people hire him to protect them against three soon-to-be-released felons. Eastwood next turned his attention towards Breezy, a film about love blossoming between a middle-aged man and a teenage girl. K. Lenz got the part of Breezy because Locke, at age 29, was near twice the character's age. The film, shot very quickly and efficiently by Eastwood and Frank Stanley, came in $1 million under budget and was finished three days ahead of schedule. Breezy was not a major critical or commercial success. Eastwood teamed up with Jeff Bridges and George Kennedy in the buddy action caper Thunderbolt and Lightfoot. His acting was noted by critics but was overshadowed by Bridges who was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. Eastwood reportedly fumed at the lack of Academy Award recognition for him and swore that he would never work for. Eastwood's next film The Iger Sanction was based on Trevanian's critically acclaimed spy novel of the same name. In the process, he must climb the north face of the Iger in Switzerland under perilous conditions. Despite prior warnings about the perils of the Iger, the film crew suffered a number of accidents, including one fatality. Despite the danger, Eastwood insisted on doing all his own climbing and stunts. Upon release in May 1975 the Iger sanction was marginally successful commercially, receiving $14.2 million at the box office, and gained mixed reviews. Joy Gould Boyum of the Wall Street Journal dismissed the film as brutal fantasy. 
Eastwood was then offered the role of Benjamin L. Willard in Francis Coppola's Apocalypse Now but declined as he did not want to spend weeks on location in the Philippines. He also refused the part of a platoon leader in Ted Post's Vietnam War film, Go Tell the Spartans, and instead decided to make a third Dirty Harry film, The Enforcer. The film, culminating in a shootout on Alcatraz Island, was considerably shorter than the previous Dirty Harry films at 95 minutes but was a major commercial success grossing $100 million worldwide to become Eastwood's highest grossing film to date. In every which way but loose, he has an uncharacteristic offbeat comedy role. His character, Philo Beto, is a trucker and brawler who roams the American West searching for a lost love accompanied by his best friend, Orville Boggs, and an orangutan called Clyde. The film proved surprisingly successful upon its release and became Eastwood's most commercially successful film up to that time. Panned by critics, it ranked high among the box office successes of his career and was the second highest grossing film of 1978. Eastwood starred in Escape from Alcatraz, the last of his films directed by Siegel. It was based on the true story of Frank Lee Morris who, along with John and Clarence Anglin, escaped from the notorious Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary in 1962. The film was a major success. Stanley Kaufman of The New Republic praised it as crystalline cinema and Frank Rich of Time described it as cool, cinematic grace. Eastwood made his only foray into the TV direction with the Amazing Stories episode Vanessa in the Garden, which starred Harvey Keitel and Locke as a married couple. This was his first collaboration with Steven Spielberg, who later co-produced Flags of Our Fathers and Letters from Iwo Jima. Eastwood starred in The Deadpool, the fifth and final film in the Dirty Harry series. Always interested in jazz, he directed Bird, a biopic starring Forrest Whitaker as jazz musician Charlie Bird Parker, alto saxophonist Jackie McLean and Spike Lee. Eastwood received two Golden Globes for the film, the Cecil B. DeMille Award for his lifelong contribution, and the Best Director Award. However, Bird was a commercial failure, earning just $11 million, which Eastwood attributed to the declining interest in jazz among black people. The film was nominated for nine Academy Awards, including Best Actor for Eastwood and Best Original Screenplay for David Webb Peoples, and won four, including Best Picture and Best Director for Eastwood. In June 2008 Unforgiven was ranked as the fourth Best American Western, behind Shane, High Noon, and The Searchers in the American Film Institute's AFI's 10 Top 10 list. Eastwood played an ex-FBI agent chasing a sadistic killer in the thriller Blood Work, loosely based on the 1998 novel of the same name by Michael Connolly. The film was a commercial failure, grossing just $26.2 million on an estimated budget of $50 million and received mixed reviews, with Rotten Tomatoes describing it as, well made but marred by lethargic pacing. Eastwood did, however, win the Future Film Festival Digital Award at the Venice Film Festival for the film. Eastwood directed and scored the crime drama Mystic River, a film dealing with themes of murder, vigilantism, and sexual abuse and starring Sean Penn, Kevin Bacon, and Tim Robbins. The film was praised by critics and won two Academy Awards, Best Actor for Penn and Best Supporting Actor for Robbins, with Eastwood garnering nominations for Best Director and Best Picture. The film grossed $90 million domestically on a budget of $30 million. In 2003, Eastwood was named Best Director of the Year by the National Society of Film Critics. The following year, Eastwood found further critical acclaim with Million Dollar Baby. The boxing drama won four Academy Awards for Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actress, and Best Supporting Actor. At age 74, Eastwood became the oldest of 18 directors to have directed two or more Best Picture winners. He also received a nomination for Best Actor, as well as a Grammy nomination for his score, and won a Golden Globe for Best Director, which was presented to him by his daughter Catherine, 
who was Miss Golden Globe at the 2005 ceremony. A. O. Scott of The New York Times lauded the film as a masterpiece and the best film of the year. Eastwood directed two films about World War II's Battle of Iwo Jima released in 2006. The first, Flags of Our Fathers, was followed by Letters from Iwo Jima. Letters from Iwo Jima was the first American film to depict a war issue completely from the view of an American enemy. Both films received praise from critics and garnered several nominations at the 79th Academy Awards, including Best Director, Best Picture, and Best Original Screenplay for Letters from Iwo Jima. At the 64th Golden Globe Awards Eastwood received nominations for Best Director in both films. Letters from Iwo Jima won the award for Best Foreign Language Film. Eastwood next directed Changeling, based on a true story set in the late 1920s. The film was highly acclaimed, with Damon Wise of Empire describing Changeling as flawless. For the film, Eastwood received nominations for Best Original Score at the 66th Golden Globe Awards, Best Direction at the 62nd British Academy Film Awards, and Director of the Year from the London Film Critics Circle. Eastwood ended a four-year self-imposed acting hiatus by appearing in Gran Torino, which he also directed, produced, and partly scored with his son Kyle and Jamie Cullum. Gran Torino grossed almost $30 million during its opening weekend release in January 2009, the highest of his career as an actor or director. Gran Torino eventually grossed over $268 million in theaters worldwide, becoming the highest grossing film of Eastwood's career so far. Eastwood's 30th directorial outing came with Invictus, a film based on the story of the South African team at the 1995 Rugby World Cup for the film, Eastwood was nominated for Best Director at the 67th Golden Globe Awards. That is what stands out most to you. Your dedication will go with these years, it will be a beautiful memory.